If you've spent any amount of time in the Windward Plains, you've probably seen one of these guys run by. Everywhere in the game, these guys are referred to as Wind Rustlers. But because I'm a pedant, I've given them the name Acerosaurus cunafaensis. That means maple leaf lizard from Canafa. Now, just like basically every animal with the suffix saurus, that doesn't necessarily mean they're lizards. By the way, I study ornithology and paleontology, and I have a little bit of experience with fossil fish, and I also really love Monster Hunter. Initially, I was pretty excited because these guys look a lot like your typical dinosaur. However, the dev team couldn't do it, an easy categorization toss-up for me because of a few key traits, mainly with the hand. First of all, these guys have super long, flexible tails and more than three digits on their hands, which would be an issue if I was trying to categorize them within the group of dinosaurs called theropods, which is what they most closely resemble in terms of their general body plan, being kind of long-necked, upright runners. However, between this kind of bizarre rearing up posture that they do when they're just standing around, the pronated wrists, which means the hands are facing downward instead of in, like in a dinosaur, and the tail like waving around when they run, I think it's actually relatively unlikely that these guys are dinosaurs. And if they are, they must be incredibly, incredibly derived. And they also lack feathers, which are one of the main traits we use to identify the theropods. Additionally, these guys have claws on all of the forelimb digits, as opposed to just three, which we need for them to be in Archosauria. And as I mentioned previously, they're completely scaly, which is not out of the ordinary for Archosaurs, but it is definitely a point against them being dinosaurs. These things on the head that look like feathers are actually like big mats of flesh and tissue that seem to be pulled up by these little nubs of muscle at the base that act like a pulley and kind of tug on maybe a little filament or a little stick of cartilage or bone and get them to stick up like they do here. While these guys might not be true dinosaurs, they're probably closer to like the para-reptiles, if they are reptiles at all. They do have a very similar body plan to a group of dinosaurs called the Manoraptorans. If you look at one of the many Manoraptoran dinosaurs, well adapted for running and jumping, you'll notice one thing in particular besides all of their other traits. They have a very short femur and then a very long, and a very long lower section of the leg. And that's because you want kind of all of your leg muscle to be as close to the body as possible so that it doesn't have to be pulled around with the rest of the leg when you're running. If these guys had a ton of muscle low down on the leg, this big muscle up here that pulls the leg forward and back is going to have a lot harder of a time moving it around when they're running, which is why the wind rustlers have super long, super skinny, uh, less muscular sections of the leg. The muscles in the tibia and fibula, as well as the muscles uh, in the foot here, are not nearly as necessary for running as these big, meaty thigh bits. Which is exactly why the bone that you eat in a chicken is not the foot bone. You use that for soup stock, at least in most cases, and the meatiest part of the chicken leg is up at the top. Because chickens are manoraptorans. Nice that we came full circle. I like to remind people that birds are dinosaurs. So yeah, these guys seem to be very highly convergent with, uh, you know, dinosaurs and their close relatives that are engineered for running, but between the lack of archosaurian hand morphology and the lack of feathers and a bunch of other traits that really don't show up in dinosaurs being present on these guys, I'm inclined to believe that they're probably part of another group of reptiles entirely that is unique to the Monster Hunter universe. That still absolutely means that I'm going to categorize them and taxonomize them. It also just means that they'll probably have a separate name for their group. One other really interesting thing I wanted to talk about with these guys are the eyeballs. They are huge and they have these tiny little pupils in them which makes sense because these wind rustlers are out in a pretty wide range of times. They operate in light and dark conditions, and therefore having a big eye with a pupil that can shrink super small as opposed to constantly being overexposed to bright sunlight is very helpful. Additionally, these guys don't seem to have super chewing-focused heads, so I imagine their favorite prey would probably be the wiggly lichy. These guys are larvae that hang around in the windward plains, as well as many of the other areas, and they're very soft, very squishy, and very highly nutritious, according to the game's uh, description of them. So I imagine these guys are probably going after small insects, and insects are quick, but they can also take off super fast, which is probably one of the reasons why these guys are really, really quick on their feet. Another reason is definitely their predator avoidance strategy. When you scare one wind rustler, it sticks up this big filament on top of its head, which probably is also used in other forms of communication, but when this big uh, sort of structure on top of its head sticks up, the other ones all perk up and then they all scatter. 
Uh, they still maintain a group structure when they run away, though, which is interesting. And one factor of that might be that it is harder for a predator to pick a target out of that group if they're all running together. You'll probably notice them the most out in the open plains, but after they tire themselves out by running, they'll let down their little filament structures that are on top of their heads, and they'll go for a rest in these little bush areas. Which makes sense, you know, you get hot running around, and they probably want to take a little bit of time to cool down. The coloration of these guys is super cool and pretty typical of what we would see in a desert animal, especially one that's adapted for living in kind of slightly more uh, foliage-dense deserts like the grassy sections of the Windward Plain. Speaking of coloration, let's talk about the black wind rustlers. The game says these might potentially be a subspecies, but the fact that they almost exclusively hang out around the other wind rustlers makes it unlikely that they're speciating because they seem to occupy the same area and the same niche. Additionally, they're much rarer, and I've never seen black wind rustlers in a group, which makes me think that this represents a melanistic mutation that potentially enables black wind rustlers to reach a higher point of the dominance hierarchy within their group, grow larger, but still remain relatively rare. It's not uncommon for uh, darker colored animals to do better in certain environments. In general, if they're being hunted by nocturnal predators, they'll have a much stronger survival advantage at night. For the case of the wind rustlers, I imagine that this is also the case because it means that they're harder to spot when they're hiding in bushes, which they only do when they're most vulnerable. When they're out in the plains, it's very difficult to catch them because most predators that would go after them when they're not tired will fail to catch up. So the drab colored wind rustlers don't have an advantage over the dark colored wind rustlers in an open environment, but when they're all hiding, the dark colored wind rustlers have a very distinct advantage because they blend in with the shadows. It could also have to do with age. Several animals darken their color as they age. Uh, cormorants, for example, tend to take on a darker color year after year. And so these might just be anomalously old wind rustlers that could also explain why they're so big. In general, it's difficult to uh, you know, associate whether or not the melanism is a product or the cause of this sort of competitive advantage that the uh, black wind rustlers have. So yeah, there you go. That is the wind rustler. Acerosaurus canafaensis. Please let me know which creatures or plants or anything you'd like to see next from Monster Hunter or beyond.